Chapter 8 discusses a common problem in outdoor photography, which is although the color may look good and the composition is, is good, sometimes the sky just looks too weak. Chapter 8 provides an action that will make the sky look more romantic, more appropriate, somewhat heavier. Actually, it supplies two actions. They're very easy to use. Why do we have two? Because they work slightly differently and one may look better in certain cases than the other one does. Generally speaking, I'd say you can uh, divide these sort of sky pictures into two categories. Once where one category where the sky is rather simple, where there's not a whole lot of interaction between the blueness of the sky and the clouds. And the second category would be something more complicated, where you have little patches of blue peeking out from behind clouds, that kind of thing. The two actions that we supply, the main one I would say is called Darken Sky SC. That's the one you should consider the, the first resort. Um, and that also works the best in the simpler kind of sky. The second action called uh, Darken Sky B um, tends to work a little bit better in complicated skies. But if you have the time, you can try them both if you like. Each one leaves an alpha channel behind it, which you can then use to intensify the sky further or to blur the sky or do a lot of things that are discussed in Chapter 8. But let's just show how it works. Okay, first, I'm going to show a very simple sky. Um, and this is the sort of picture where I think we would all agree we could use to have a, a deeper, darker, bluer sky. So we just click the action down here, SC. And this is what we get. Uh, if we think that sky is a little bit too heavy, then we drop the opacity to something more palatable like that. There's before, there's after. Big improvement with almost no cost. Okay, You'll see that it has left a, um, an alpha channel here. That's what it looks like. That's a selection of the sky. And you can use that. You can load it up again, blur the sky if you want to, make the sky darker later on, change the sky's color later on, whatever. You have to remember that at the end of the operation, when you're done with your final correction, if you don't need this, this alpha channel anymore, delete it. Otherwise, you won't be able to save a JPEG. Okay, so that's the simple sky action. The more complicated one, here is one that appears in the book. This is your figure 8-2. Arches National Park, very fine composition, somewhat dull in the, the fact that it doesn't have a lot of color variation in the foreground. We can fix that easily enough with uh, the Modern Man from Mars action, with the color boost. But the sky is kind of boring. This is a more complicated sky than the first one because we see there is a whole lot of action going on in the clouds. So my first choice here would be to use the B action rather than the SC action. But if there were time, I'd try them both, just to see which one I like better. Okay, so let's just do the B here. And you may notice this is taking a little bit longer because it's a more complex action. But there's before, there's after. That's the same general effect we wanted, where we have, we're finding the blue parts of the sky and we're making them darker. And because we have them isolated, we can make these bluer and not just darker if we want to. There's almost no way within Photoshop to get something that accurate in something as hard to select as this area of the sky. And you can see, if we look at the final version of this picture, how important this step was. Okay, this was before, this was after. And now let's for a moment just look at the final. There it is. And you can see how important in this picture is this blue area of the sky that was practically invisible in the original. See if we can see that. This is the original picture, which has almost nothing in the sky. And this is the final, which has something very interesting going on. So that's how you use these actions.